to this Eucharist today for the fourth Sunday of Trinity. We meet again via the uh, medium of YouTube and hopefully very soon we will be meeting together in person. But until then, via this medium, all of you are welcome. If one of you were missing, we would not be complete. So let us prepare our hearts and minds to meet our God in word, in sacrament, and in one another. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Moment of silence, we bring before our God those things on our Mighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins, for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Of your charity, pray for me, a sinner also. And now, having been forgiven our sins and reconciled to God, we rejoice by joining the song of the angels. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. 
Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we will have our readings. A reading from the book of Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind, I am a slave to the law of God. But with my flesh, I am a slave to the law of sin. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you will not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, and a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At the time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to the infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father and no one knows the Son except the Father and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It can be incredibly annoying when other people try to stereotype or they try to pigeonhole you, to stick you in a box. When somebody else expects you to behave in a certain way or be a certain way for no other reason than it fits into their own ideas and preconceptions about who they think you should be. You stand there and very often think, hey, that's not who I am. The person that you expect me to be is not the same as the person that I am in reality. And it can be annoying and it can be frustrating, but it can also be deeply harmful. Jesus himself certainly wasn't one to get away without being pigeonholed or without failing to meet up with people's expectations. In our Gospel reading today, although Jesus is referring to his own generation, he could just as easily be speaking of our generation today. They thought that John the Baptist was some kind of demon and they accused Jesus of being a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and, singer, and, and sinners. Well, they weren't exactly wrong there, were they? Because interestingly, they describe Jesus not by who he is, but by the company he keeps, which unsurprisingly does not meet with their approval. But then again, Jesus never really was one to seek other people's approval. But the response of Jesus to them is interesting because he compares them to children. And small children, he suggests, would have more insight into the will of God than these grown men who seem more occupied with playing power games and with trying to catch him out. Because the Messiah, the one they've been longing for and waiting for for so long, is right there in front of them. And they fail completely to see beyond the superficial appearances of both John the Baptist and Jesus. It's clear that Jesus knows exactly who he is, in the way that he addresses God as his Father. He's confident and he's secure in his own identity, but can others see him for who he truly is? Well, to be honest, it's looking rather doubtful at the moment, because they completely misunderstood who Jesus was or what he was all about. They based their judgments on nothing more than their own preconceived prejudice. How often, I wonder, are we misunderstood? How often are we characterised in ways which don't really describe who we truly are, but instead fit into the narrative of the person who's making the judgment about us? The frustration of having somebody assume they know all about you, based upon where you grew up, or what school you went to, based upon your gender identity, your sexuality, or the colour of your skin. And people, they jump to all sorts of conclusions based upon these external attributes over which you have no control. And more often than not, those conclusions are wrong because they don't give us the full picture. 
none of these factors are able to truly capture the complexity of who a person really is. It's easy to jump to conclusions based upon a minimum of information. Yet stereotyping somebody in this way can have huge implications for them, whether we realise that or not. And those implications can range from violence to discrimination, from a negative self-image to getting stuck into a cycle of destruction. And it's disappointing and it's disheartening to be on the receiving end of somebody who isn't really seeing us for who we truly are. We might wonder, why don't they get it? Why don't they know who I am? Why don't they know who the real me is? But for that to happen in any meaningful way, there needs to be some kind of relationship which goes beyond the superficial. Time needs to be taken in getting to know one another so that we are able to let go of our fixed judgments and truly learn and understand from one another. And so often we see that those around Jesus simply didn't get who he was. These great upstanding teachers of the law certainly didn't. And as we read the gospel accounts, very often those closest to Jesus, his own disciples, didn't always get who Jesus was and what he stood for. And these teachers of the law, it was them that were looking on and disgusted as Jesus mixed with those who were very often deemed undesirable. The tax collectors, the prostitutes, the unclean. I wonder if Jesus was here now, would he be hanging around with a good, clean living church people? Or would he find more of a home with those who perhaps we often walk by ourselves in the streets? Would he be more at home with the homeless? the addicts, the marginalised. And if we did, would we judge him on that? Because we build up an image of Jesus and who he is, which is based upon so many different things. From the gentle Jesus, meek and mild of our childhood, to the long, blonde-haired, blue-eyed way which we so often see him portrayed as in Western arts. And of course, that's nothing like how he actually would have been in reality but it builds up a perception or a stereotype in our minds. But the challenge for us is to open our minds, open our eyes and our hearts and see the real Jesus. The Jesus who was a Middle Eastern Jew. The Jesus who was friends with drunks and prostitutes. The Jesus who breaks down barriers and who goes beyond closed minds and stereotypes to be with people where they are, as they are. Jesus called God Father, and he invites us to do so as well. And in doing so, we share something with him of what it is to know the will of God. We have an expansive, outward-looking God who fully understands rather than misunderstands each and every one of us, and who sees through the barriers of race, of gender, class, or whatever barrier we so often erect and then fail to break down ourselves. And when we enter into a relationship with God, we reflect something of God in our daily lives, in our relationships and our interactions with those we meet from day to day. And in doing so, hopefully, we become just a little more like Jesus each day. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Virgin, from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Let us pray for the Church and for the world, and let us give thanks to God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Martin, our Bishop, and all your Church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Bless and guide Elizabeth our Queen, give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another, and love as he loves us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. And so rejoice in, in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Nicholas and all your saints. We commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. God is love. And those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed be God who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise. Blessed be God forever. Pray, dear friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. From sunrise to sunset, this day is holy, for Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day, the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so far, the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Nicholas and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. According 
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, preserve your body and soul unto everlasting life. Remember that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, hopefully uh, you will have received uh, an email or a letter from me saying that we will be resuming uh, services as of next Sunday, the 12th. Um, we will still be recording services, so if you are unable to get to church, you will still have the opportunity to see uh, the services that, that we record. But those of you who do come, it will be different, it might be difficult, but uh, we will struggle through and we'll get used to it as we've got used to uh, watching services online. So please do, if you can, safely join us. If not, continue to watch uh, the services that are on Facebook and YouTube. Please also continue to pray for one another and to pray for those especially who affect, are affected by this terrible disease. Friends, 
bow your heads and pray to God's blessing. The Lord be with you. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.